I'm gonna go teach some yoga, so I guess you guys can join me for the ride over there. We can talk a little bit about what I'm doing, where I've come from, so you get a little bit of background about me and why I'm leaving everything I've known and everything I love based off of something I feel in my chest. <laughs> It sounds kind of weird to put it out there, but um, a few years ago, um, I was, uh, we'll just, we'll go back up to the factory store. I was working in a factory. I've been out in California working as an engine girl on an antique racing yacht. Um, and that was an interesting story in and of itself. I apologize for the lighting. Um, and I got a call from my mom being like, you coming home for the holidays, you just, we miss you, just, you know, just please come back. And it was kind of a weird, I don't know, the tone of, I didn't know if she's being needy or what. So I came back, um, I ended up moving in with a friend from high school and, um, you know, I got a couple, part-time jobs, I moved up to full-time jobs uh, in the automotive industry. You know, something I enjoyed and I was good at it, so I did that. But, um, you know, they were pretty low to minimum wage jobs and I, I'd have my degree and I was just kind of looking for, constantly looking for better, something better. And um, my buddy was like, well, they need workers in this factory. It's third shifts, you know, it paid, it paid a lot better. It has excellent benefits, best benefits ever, great HR department. So I went to work there and it was real easy. There was a union. The union about a month in came came to me and I was like, you need to stop working so fast. You need to stop getting your numbers so high you're making the rest of us look bad. And I'm sitting here like, well, I wanna I want to improve, I wanna move up in this company. I'm I'm you know, I'm not gonna slow my work. And I started seeing trends where they'd be like, Yeah, we'll pay for your education, we'll do this, we'll do that, and I kept performing, kept performing, kept getting you know, exceeding my quotas, and then I, I would drop down to like 2% less than what I produced one night, and I had my um, uh, manager come and pull me in the office, like, oh, what's wrong, are you sick, are you feeling bad? I was like, no, I'm, I'm doing great. He's like, well, you're uh, you're down 2%. I'm like, but I'm still outperforming everyone else on the floor. Why are you upset that I'm down 2%? And I started seeing all that, like, you know, they're like, oh, we'll move you to this department, we'll move you to that department. Well, oh, just, just one more month, just three more months, I am spending two years of my life there and um, and I was chasing that carrot and I was doing that. I was like, well, I'm building up my retirement account. This is good, this is great. Um, I hated life, hated it. Like I would get on my bike, I would get off at like seven in the morning, I would go ride to the mountains, ride all day, not sleep. I'd ride back to work and work again. I was going days without sleep, falling asleep on my, I, I got another job on top of my full-time job at um, a motorsports store and they didn't even believe me. They're like, you're not working those hours. No, no one can work those hours without doing crack. Well, I assure you I wasn't doing crack, but I was tired. At one point I fell asleep on my little ninja going from one job to the other and I veered off an exit ramp and I woke up, <laughs> I woke up going off of an exit ramp and I was like, wow, I need to probably stop this. Um, and, and of course the part-time jobs don't want you to work more hours. They didn't want you to cut back. Full-time jobs, like I'm not gonna quit the full-time job to work for the crap of your part-time job. And it was just kind of a numbers game and the numbers weren't really adding up. And one night I was going to work on my 250 at, um, if you're from Atlanta, you'll know Spaghetti Junction, uh, where 285 goes, uh, I was going up the up ramp to, to 85 and there was construction. And I was just like, well, that's lovely. There's speeding traffic in the left lane. There's construction cones on the right. And the lane I was in was kind of coming to a standstill. And I saw this and I also noticed in my rear view, a car behind me doing this number. And I'm like, this is not good. So instead of veering into the construction zone or trying to go <laughs> into traffic on a 250, cause that wouldn't have worked. Um, I got hit, thrown into the van in front of me. And instead of stopping, the guy kept going, ran me over and kept going until the bike was so far wedged under the front of his car that the front wheels were off the ground and he could not go anywhere anymore. Uh, he proceeded to get out of the car, get out a two-ton floor jack. Yeah, one of those 
loose in the trunk, really? And uh, try to jack the car up and off, get it off. The paramedics had shown up by that point. Um, I was hurt pretty bad, and I was I was livid. And the guy's trying to trying to leave. And the paramedics like, well, legally we can't do anything. It's like I will crawl over there and stop him if you don't. And um, funny part of the story is I had this little hot bodies exhaust. Uh, if you ride, they're you familiar with? They're the most loudest, most obnoxious, illegal little. I mean, I guess they're legal. I don't know the sound decibel. Like the sound decibel ratings, you know, you get kicked off a track for one of those. And no one wants to ride with you. My thing was like, loud pipes save lives, and I don't think I was wrong. Here's why. <laughs> the guy that ran me over was legally deaf, so I had the loudest exhaust on the planet, and I got run over by the deaf guy. So, loud pipes might still save lives as long as you're not fucking on the road with deaf people. Uninsured, out of state, drinking but not impaired deaf people. Really, man? Like, I had to pay the deductible on my insurance and they're like, sorry, we tried to find him. Good thing you have uninsured motorists and you have a good policy. And it's like, great. So now my neck's jacked up. I'm supposed to have trigger point injections for the rest of my life. I was out on disability for months. <laughs> and um, and luckily the company, the full-time benefits, it was great. They paid like 70% of my pay. They paid for all my medical care. Like HR communicated with me well, it was great. So yeah, if you're gonna get run over, go for that full-time job. Do it. But while I was there on the side of the road, and you can ask the, the witnesses that stopped. I was like, I need to call my boss. They're like, no, he'll understand. I'm like, no, you don't understand. I need to call my boss. Somebody needs to call my boss and tell him I'm gonna be late. And at that point, it didn't dawn on me that I was like, I was hurt so bad. And when, when I realized that I was hurt so bad, this was the turning point for me. When I realized that I was hurt so bad that I couldn't go in, a wave of relief went over in me. I was like, I don't have to go back to that place tonight. Like, I was so happy <laughs> to be fucking run over because I didn't have to go to work. Like, how jacked up is that? It literally took me getting physically run over to realize what a bad situation I was in. Chasing that carrot, chasing the retirement, chasing the benefits. Glad I had the benefits. Uh, I recently crashed an exo set into a wall and that's that's fun going through that right now working all part-time jobs and all my insurance like to point fingers at the other insurance because uh, that's the way the system is so you gotta play that game but again when I you know this this past time when I hit the wall and I was out for about a month on dis well not even a disability because I don't have it I just have been out not making money um, and unable to work medically it's it, it's a reflection time of like what am I doing with my life and like where am I going and, and why am I in this situation 